Hello everyone, I am Satya Sekar, a developer advocate with Salesforce. Today, we will walk through the Apex syntax and code structure. We will see how to use this syntax with a demo. This syntax is similar to other programming languages like Java with a few Salesforce specific features. If you are getting started with Apex and want to understand what is Apex, how and where to write Apex code and how to execute the Apex code, you can check the quick take Apex basics and anonymous execution. The link is provided in the description below. Let's now explore the syntax and structure of Apex with some sample code. Apex is a block structured language. We write blocks of code. We use curly braces as block delimiters and terminate statements with semicolons. As in Java, you can create classes in Apex. A class can contain variables and methods. Here you can see is available is a variable and add book is a method and we also have a constructor which initializes the is available variable. You can notice that this class has an access modifier public. Public access modifier in Apex is little different from Java and it makes this Apex code accessible only within the application. You can use the global access modifier to make this class accessible by all Apex code everywhere. Apex supports private, protected, public and global access modifiers. Here is available is a private variable and can be accessed only from within the class. Apex is a strongly typed language that essentially means all variables and expressions have a data type such as integer, long, double, etc. Is available is a boolean variable. Now let's see some of the primitive data types supported by Apex. Apex supports most of the data types available in other programming languages. For instance, it has integer, which is a 32-bit number that does not include decimal point. If you are familiar with other programming languages, you might be wondering why this data type is defined as integer, not just int. That is because in Apex, the primitive data types are also objects. This allows you to call methods on primitive data types like value of method, format method, etc. Let's see some of the specific data types in Apex. Decimal is a number that includes the decimal point. The strings are represented using single quotes and not double quotes in Apex. This is a common pitfall for most of the developers who just get started with Apex. The boolean can hold true, false or even null value as all primitive data types are objects. ID is also a primitive data type in Apex which can hold any valid 18 character lightning platform record identifier. You can also set ID to a 15 character value in which case Apex converts it to 18 character representation. Also note that all Apex data types inherit from object. Hence you can cast an object to a specific data type. Before we move on we should see a significant data type S object which means Salesforce object. As you might know Apex is tightly integrated with the database and you can access Salesforce records and their fields directly from Apex. Every record in Salesforce is natively represented as a S object. These S objects can be standard S objects that are available out of the box like account, contact, etc. Or you can define custom S objects using the UI or metadata API. You can also add custom fields to the existing standard and custom objects. You can use API names to access the custom objects and custom fields. For example, book underscore underscore C corresponds to the book S object. Let's see that in the code. Here you can see that we are using book custom object and we are accessing it using its API name book underscore underscore C. In the add book method, we are instantiating a book object and setting its properties using the dot notation. These are actually fields in the record. Let's deploy this code to the org. When we deploy the code, the source code compiles automatically. Let's test this code using anonymous execution. As you can see here, we are creating a book controller object and invoking the add book method. Unlike Java, here you can notice that I am using single quotes for the string value advanced apex. We are using system.debug to print the book object in the log. Let's execute it. Here 
Here you can see that it has printed book underscore underscore C and its values. In this code, we work with a single book record. You can also work with multiple records in Apex using collections. Let's see different types of collections that are available in Apex. Apex supports three kinds of typed collections, list, set, and map. List is an ordered collection of elements that are distinguished by their indices. As you can see here, the elements red, green, yellow are all indexed and the index position of the first element is always zero. It looks like an array, right? Hence, the list can be accessed in dual syntax. You can use array notation or collection notation. A set is an unordered collection of elements that do not contain any duplicates as shown here. A map is a collection of key value pairs where each unique key maps to a single value. The collection elements can be of any data type. It could be primitive types, other collection types, S objects, user defined types, or built in Apex types. Like most other programming languages, Apex support control statements, both conditional statements and iterations. It supports if else statements, switch statements, do while loops, while loops, and a variation of for loops, something like traditional Java syntax and also syntax to iterate over collections. Okay, let's now explore more Apex language features with a demo. We'll use this bookstore app for demo. You can see that it has book records. We got a new requirement to apply a default discount to all the books that cost more than $50. For demo sake, we want to implement this using Apex. Here again, I'm in VS Code in an SFDX project, which is already connected to the org. I made some changes to the earlier code to implement the use case. You can see I have added a keyword with sharing. The keyword controls the security aspect of the class, that is whether to impose the sharing rules of the current user or not. If we use without sharing, any queries in the class ignore sharing rules while returning the record. If we use with sharing, it enforces sharing rules. For example, this query will only return records that the user have permissions to access. You can also use inherited sharing, in which case it will respect the sharing settings of the calling class. Okay, let's now examine the syntax further. Here, I have created apply discount method. You can notice that I'm using a static keyword. Like in Java, Apex supports static keyword and this method is now a class method because it is declared as static. We have written a SQL query, which returns a list of books whose price is greater than $50. Here, we can see that we are using array syntax to store the books. As I said earlier, we can use the dual syntax for the list collection. So let's go and change this array syntax into a list syntax. We'll use list with book underscore underscore C data type. You can see that we are using if condition, which is Java like syntax. And we are checking null condition and also the list size is greater than zero. In Apex, we can use a new kind of operator called safe navigation operator to combine these two checks together. Let's do that. Here we are using question dot to check null condition and then invoke the size method. And this operator can be chained to invoke more methods in order. You can also see that we are using for loop here to apply the discount and finally update the records using the update DML method. One important point worth noting here is that the code is running on the cloud and there is a restriction on number of DML statements in a single execution. This is called governor limit. Hence, we should avoid using update method in the loop not to hit these limits. That is the reason we are applying the discount in the loop and finally making only one DML update call. This process is called bulkification of code in Apex. Let's now invoke apply discount method from anonymous Apex and see how it works. But wait, first let's check the price of the books before applying the discount. We can see getting started with Apex book costs $100. Okay, let's now invoke apply discount method. You can see that I'm invoking the apply discount method directly with the class name as it is a static method. Let's execute the code anonymously. It has executed successfully. Let's now check the book records. 
and there you can see the updated values. Apex also supports annotations. You can add the annotations to the classes or class methods. For example, you can use at ease test annotation to mark classes and methods as unit tests. At feature can be used to mark a method as a synchronous method. We can use at or enable annotation to allow a method to be called from a lightning component. And at invocable method annotation allows a method to be called directly from a process or flow, etc. In this quick take, we covered basic syntax and structure of Apex. We saw the similarities and some of the differences between Apex and other object-oriented programming languages. We saw how to use this syntax and write the code. To learn more, you can visit the Platform Developer Center on developer.salesforce.com. You can find Apex documentation and other Apex resources. You can also find the link to the Apex recipes, which has Apex code samples implemented with best practices and patterns. Thanks for watching this quick tech. If you learned something, be sure to like this video. If you want to get more content like this pushed to you directly, click subscribe and the bell icon to get the notifications.